I didn't have all of the answers at 28 years old of who I was going to be or even what I wanted to be, but I knew that my life was more valuable than 52 years life in prison. I walked into a courtroom and everything changed. I grew up in a, in a broken home. My parents divorced when I was four or five years old. I was always a bright kid, but it was very difficult for me to get settled. In school, I found myself bored easily and getting into a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have gotten into at a young age. One day, this friend of mine asked me to take a car over to his father's shop where they used to work with stolen vehicles, replace VIN numbers and that type of thing. And we got pulled over. Because I had prior strikes, I ended up finding myself in the midst of this new law that had just come out in California at the time called the California Three Strikes Law, where basically if you committed any felony or were involved with any felony, you could get life in prison. And that ultimately led me to my trajectory back to prison for being a passenger in a stolen vehicle in 1996. When I went into court, the judge wanted me to sign a plea bargain for 14 years right there on the spot and told me that I had five minutes to think about it. When I asked him, like, could I call my loved ones, could I call my attorney and come back the next day, he, he told me no. And he said that if I didn't take it now, that he was basically going to give me life in prison. And five days later, that's what he did. I had no idea of what life in prison really meant. It, it wasn't real to me. I couldn't fathom in a million years that I was actually going to spend the rest of my life in prison. I was numb to what the judge said. I was a 28-year-old young man who had kind of defined himself as a father, as a husband, as a brother, as a son. And I knew that I wasn't going to let someone who didn't know me, who a year after meeting me probably couldn't even recite my name, define who I was or whether I was a voiceless, faceless, throwaway member of society. And I said that I was gonna learn the law and that if I wanted to unwind what they had done to me, I had to learn how they were able to do it in the first place. So I started studying civil procedure. I studied the Rudder's Guide. I probably read over a thousand books. Everything from Warren Buffett's books, a lot of black history by Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you name it, I read it. The very book that put me in solitary confinement. How many years were you in solitary confinement? Almost that? nine. Oh my God, just because of that book. Just because of that book. I filed a civil rights lawsuit. In late May 2019, I was on my 23rd, 24th year of incarceration and I started to lose a little bit of hope. I went out to the yard, called my attorney Mike Romano at Stanford University to ask him, you know, what was going on with my case and was there any progress? He said, Ken, are you sitting down? And I said, no, I'm not sitting down. I'm standing in the yard uh, on the phone. And he said, well, I got news for you. We went in and talked to the judge in your case in LA County and they're finally gonna resentence you. And you'll be home by Friday. I remember hanging up the phone and tears just came down my face, you know? Um, I get emotional even talking about it now um, because it was the first time in almost 24 years that I felt some semblance of relief, some semblance of possibility in life. Um, and three days later on June 3rd, 2019, I walked out of prison. About four weeks after I got out of prison, I was able to secure a job at Legal Services for Prisons with Children as a paralegal. And then in 2021, Checker took the 1% pledge and wanted to operationalize something they had been doing for several years, which was Fair Chance Hiring. They gave me an opportunity to come into the company and evangelize this work all across the country in corporate America and the tech sector specifically. I don't want people to lower the bar. I want people to lower the barriers. I was extremely privileged to be able to earn livable wage immediately after I got out of prison. When people exit the prison system or have suffered a felony conviction, 50 to 60% of those people cannot find living wage work. It's now become my life work for the 80 million people in America who have suffered some type of criminal conviction and are locked out of the workforce, locked out of housing, locked out of social services that deprive them of a quality of life and a dignity of life that most of us take for granted. Now, I'm the VP of Checker.org, Checker's Social Impact and Corporate Social Responsibility Division. Nothing would have changed if I had let society define me. I believe that I can do any job on this planet that anybody else can do. I have 
a confidence about myself that if given the circumstance and the opportunity, I can excel. The first thing you have to do is you have to tune out the noise. There's a lot of noise that goes on in society, and, and most of the time the noise is from people who don't have your best interests at heart. Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you and look to examples of people who look like you, who come from the same environment as you, and model that behavior, model that tenacity, model those examples of people who have become extremely successful despite the odds. Four years ago today, I was sitting in a prison cell expecting to die in prison. And now I'm a VP at a major tech company in San Francisco, California, where the potential is the sky. And the only thing that got me to where I am today outside of the wonderful people who've helped me is my tenacity, my resilience to never find myself at the bottom 